It is finally FCS playoff day as the University of the Incarnate Word Cardinals are going up against the Furman Paladins in the second round of the FCS playoffs right here at Benson Stadium. I'm Carl Schoening, joined by head coach of the Cardinals, G.J. Kenny. Coach, well-deserved bye week that you're coming off of. And, you know, let's just kind of start there, how you earned the bye week, a 10-1 season. And you guys just pretty much, since your only loss of the season, did not have anybody come close to beating you. Uh, just what has this season been like? And uh, I know you're so in the moment right now, but uh, just sitting back and taking a quick second to reflect, uh, how did the regular season treat you on this wild wind of a first year as a head coach? Yeah, I thought we ended it really well with Northwestern State, um, the opportunity to, to win conference and have those guys celebrate afterwards and, and hold that trophy up. Um, and, you know, that's what, that's what you put all this work in for uh, in the off season through, you know, fall camp and, and during the season. It's a grind. And, and uh, you know, so last week we were able to take it off of them a little bit mentally and physically. I think that was, that was uh, crucial. You know, we got to have the kids come over to our house for Thanksgiving and enjoy some fellowship there. And, and, uh, you know, I think the guys really enjoyed that. And, and, uh, you know, I thought we had uh, a really good week of practice and uh, we're excited to go. We're not going to go game by game, but obviously your first game as a head coach was a memorable one. You had a lightning delay and then a lights delay <laughs> as the stadium lights went out. And, uh, that just was the spark of what an incredible season. You talk about a 63-29 victory over a pretty good University of Southern Illinois team, and now you're going to just kind of keep on riding that into a three-game road swing, which included a win against Nevada. So just the early parts of the season, how everything kind of came together. Uh, can you talk about everything up until that uh, S uh, Southeastern Louisiana game? Yeah, I think uh, Southern Illinois playing at home, uh, we knew it was a big game. Uh, you know, first time as our coaching staff uh, coaching these guys in, in a game, and, and uh, they were a top ten team at the at the time, and and uh, so we knew we had to come out and make a statement for for a lot of reasons, and and uh, that our guys played really well. You talk about the you know the, the weather delay at the beginning, and you know facing some adversity, and and I thought we handled that well, and the lights going out, and I thought it was just something we we did at UIW. I had no clue what was going on, <laughs> um, but it was it was pretty cool, and um, it, it was it was a great game and exciting to to get my first win as a head coach uh, versus a quality opponent like that, and. Then you talk about the Nevada game, obviously uh, going on the road and, and uh, you know, playing the FBS team and, and uh, them coming off a big win. Um, so it was it was definitely exciting. Our guys were juiced up. You know, we, we started a little slow, um, but I thought we, you know, we, we just stayed the course. Uh, we trusted the process. We didn't get too high. We didn't get too low. And then we were able to, you know, to really lay it on them that second half and really hold them off and, and – uh, you know that 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 was a special one for sure uh, for the program for our kids. Um, it was one that you know I'll definitely never forget. Now I don't want to harp on the one blemish of the season too much, but uh, that southeastern Louisiana loss, just a last second play after you tied the game up, and just a freak one in a million mm -hmm. uh, guy gets loose down the sideline to you know score with the zeros on the clock. Is there anything that you guys drew from that game? that really put you on the tear that y'all went on the rest of the season? Or uh, was that something you think maybe would have happened either way? Yeah, I think, um, you know, it was something that obviously we didn't want to happen. Um, you know, that was on the coaching staff and, and uh, you know, we recovered from it. But I think it was, you know, it turned out to, to help us in the long run. I, I really think it did. You know, our guys don't want to feel like that again. And, and uh, coaches don't want to feel like that again. And I think it hardened us for, for that stretch. And, and, you know, from that game forward, you know, we really treated every week like the playoffs because, you know, I told them I was, I was real with them. And, you know, this playoff, the seedings, uh, everything matters. How you win matters. Um, you know, it's one of those situations where, you know, you got I, I have to do what's best for my program and, and getting my guys ready for the playoffs. And, and uh, so it was a situation where Lindsey didn't get to play a lot of second halves, you know, this year and fourth quarters. And, and so I tried to leave him in as long as I could, you know, it, to keep him safe and get our guys ready and get our offense and defense ready for the playoffs to make sure we got that bye week because I knew how important that bye week was um, going into this thing. So 
um, you know, it was, it was a situation you hate, hate that, that that happened, but it probably, you know, worked out for us, to be honest. I, I do always wonder that because obviously you never want to lose, but when you're talking about the one loss versus an undefeated season, maybe there is that sort of the pain of the loss that yeah. sort of keeps you motivated throughout it. So, you know, I, I know as a first year head coach, uh, you, you obviously have been with other teams, but uh, how is that different sort of? Uh, maybe on a, a track where you only have one loss, but you remember that loss versus if you've ever been part of an undefeated team, there's maybe that little bit of antsiness of we haven't lost yet. So, you know, uh, I, I guess, is there something that you ever even think about or you just accept who you are every week? No, I think you, you hit it. Um, you know, you're spot on with that. I think there was probably a little bit of that going into the Southeastern game. You know, we were ranked really high and and uh, we knew they were a quality team and playing on the road. Uh, you know, three weeks in a row was, was tough. And, and uh, you know, I, I think it helped us in the long run. And, and uh, you know, it was one of those situations where you, you hate to see it happen, but um, I, I do think it helped us and, and kind of led us to, to where we are today. And where you are today is the seventh seed coming off a of first round by. You see this Furman team defeat Elon that had a pretty good season, pretty handedly, 31-6. to six. Mm -hmm. So now that they're coming in here to Benson Stadium, uh, you guys – sort of had a I think it was a week 10 when you finally had your bye week so now you're on two bye weeks in three weeks uh you know what's the state of the team going into this first round for you matchup second round overall yeah I think we're fresh uh we're getting healthy we'll see a couple of guys that have been banged up that, that hopefully get to play um you know I, I think our guys minds are right you know we're executing at a high level on offense um I think our defense is playing its best football um, which is which is great to see. We're flying around, and and uh, you know I think it's going to be a great game. Uh, they're very well coached, uh, great program. Uh, so I'm, I'm just excited for the game. It's time to highlight some of those players because if you're a UIW fan, you've probably been keeping up with the team all year long. But there's a lot of people in San Antonio that are jumping on the bandwagon right now as we enter the FCS. So why don't we start off with that dominant defense because. Your offense scores so quickly, they're the featured team out there being on the field most of the time. Uh, you guys came in here, and I, I'd, I'd like to actually ask as a head coach, what was the process like bringing in all of these star players and combining with the talent that's already here? Yeah, that was that was a, uh, something that I, I wanted to, to identify um, early and, and make sure we, we had enough depth um, at the D-line and at some other positions on defense. Because um, you talked about, we did have you know some really good players. You got you know your Kalechis and your Ella Davisons and Caleb Colps and Sean Holtons and, and those type of guys, Brian Mays. But um, you know you combine that with with uh, a couple first team All Conference guys that we brought in, uh, Stephen Parker and, and Chris Whitaker and, and Dante Thompson. Um, you know on that defense, uh, you know four of our seven. Um, First team all conference guys are guys that we brought in. So I think it's a credit to the staff and, and the valuation process and bringing in the right guys. Um, and then you got a lot of guys that, that um, you know, that maybe don't get the, 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 you know, all the love on the, on the internet and all that. But, you know, you're Zach McKinney's that, that play a huge role in this deal at the defensive line. The OCP is a starter that, that uh, you know, is 380 pounds that really you know clogs the middle up and, and plays his role at extremely high level. Um, you know, uh, uh, there's a lot of guys I could go on and on and on, but um, I'm really proud of those guys. Uh, you know, this this has been a situation where um, you know maybe they they haven't been featured in the past and maybe they felt a little slighted in the past, but um, you know we're we're a we're a defensive team right now. I, I think you know our mindset and our physicality and. And, uh, you know, they take pride in that. And that's something that, you know, when I got the job, uh, I wanted to, you know, focus on that defense. I wanted to make sure we were we were handling business there. And we're giving up 19 points per game right now. And, uh, you know, I, I think our guys take pride in, in, in playing defense right now. So I'm excited for those guys. So many amazing defensive statistics, the tackles for loss, the sacks, the yards per snap. And uh, it's just amazing when you consider that there are times that, you guys have been up five touchdowns and, you know, maybe sometimes something would just kind of say, oh, you know, that was a little brain lapse because we're up by so much. But they keep the defensive focus no matter what the score is that their offense is giving them. Yeah. And, and you know, we've, we've, we've played a, a lot of, um, you know, 
quality snaps by backups in those those second halves of, of those blowout wins and and it made us better as a football team you know at times there was you know they, they would go down and score on our twos and guys would get frustrated but it was one of those situations where it made us better as a team and, and uh, you get quality you build quality depth that way and and uh, I think we have a bunch of really good football players and, and some, you know, some freshmen that, that aren't freshmen anymore because of those experiences. So, um, you know, I, I think we're we're sitting right where we want to be and, and uh, you know, you know, a quality opponent like we're going to play. And, and uh, so I'm, I'm excited to, to watch that defense fly around. Yeah, while that defense is worthy of all the headlines they get, they're sort of having to fight for the headlines with the offense led by Lindsey Scott Jr., who – uh, nobody expected Cam Ward's single-season touchdowns responsible for record to be broken, much less the next year. But Lindsey Scott comes in and orchestrates this offense masterfully. He has just an amazing core of receivers. I'm sure you could name all of them because, if I'm not mistaken, you had over 20 different receivers get a catch this season. And then you're just stable of running backs led by Marcus Cooper uh, has really put this UIW offense on the map nationally. Yeah, I think obviously, like you said, it starts with Lindsey Scott. I think he's a phenomenal player, um, a guy that just does everything right. He's having a, a magical season, and, and just so happy for him and, and everything he's gone through. You know, all the different stops to to come out and, and have a senior season like like he's having is is really cool. I think he's on pace to break all kinds of different records and, and school records, national records, and. And uh, I hope, I hope you know, I don't know when they voted for the Walter Payton, but he deserves it, and I hope he gets it uh, for him. And, and uh, shoot, he, he, you know, like RG3 said, the guy deserves to be in New York, in my opinion. Uh, he's the best quarterback in college football. So um, I'm excited for him, and, and he, he handles all the success very well. Um, you know, he credits his teammates, the O-line, receivers, the defense, all that good stuff. He's a pro in everything he does. So really excited for him. And I think when you talk about the other guys, uh, when you talk about our offense, uh, I think the the cool thing, and and I think you know obviously the opposing coaches know, but uh, when you look at the stats, we're almost um, to the T fifty fifty on the year run pass. So uh, we want to be a run play action team. Uh, you look at someone like Marcus Cooper, the, the you know the game he had versus Northwestern State. I mean, he has some incredible runs, and you know I think our tempo really wears you down in the second half, and and. Uh, you know the way we train and the way our offensive line comes off the ball, and and that second half we're we're able to get after people that way. So, uh, really excited about the run game and and you know him him going over a thousand yards and and setting you know different school records and all that kind of good stuff. That was great for for Coop because he's another guy that that really deserves it. Um, so excited for him and like you talked about the the stable of backs that that play a, a different role in that deal and then. At the wideout position, uh, you know, it starts with Grimes and Chafin. Those two guys are, are all Americans, and, and the, the numbers they're putting up is, is ridiculous. Uh, and these NFL scouts come through here; they they love them, and, and I'm excited that you know Grimes is, is going to get to play in some All Star games. I think Chafin's going to have the opportunity to. I'm, I'm you know standing on the table for him every time one of these scouts comes by in these NFL you know All Star games. You know they they're calling me and, and asking me and. So I'm excited for both of those guys' future, and, and you know I think they both are, are great teammates. Um, they 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 work hard. They they block uh, when, when they don't have the the ball in their hands. Um, and then all the role players. You, you talk about the Brandon Porters that that's having a great season. Uh, the C.J. Hardys, the the Cole Wilsons, the Marquez Perez's, the, the Jalen Campbell. I mean that guy is unbelievable. Jalen Campbell, just so you know, is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. That guy is 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 uh he, he's a big time player um great attitude and explosive i mean the guy's 6'2 200 pounds and and and, and kind of run uh, like anyone nobody i've ever seen so uh just really happy for the way those guys and the way coach killo is has uh, managed that room with all those with all that talent and, and all the personalities and and for them to to root for their teammates and play for each other is, it's hard to do um especially this day and age with all the kind of you know internet and nil and all that kind of good stuff so it's it's been great to see that and then you know obviously the offensive line we've we've saying these guys praise us since I've got here. Um, you know, a couple first team all conference guys. I I don't know how Jamedo and Nash didn't get first team all conference. They're the best tackles in the FCS and they get in first team all conference, which was was uh, criminal in my opinion. So uh I wanna just make sure and say that it's ridiculous. Um so <laughs> Um, no, really, I'm with you, Coach. Yeah. I also have some notes on the Coach of the Year in the Southland. Yeah. I kind of thought you were up there too, but yeah. no, I, I, I got you on that. Yeah. Um, so it's it's a situation. Just really, just those guys up front. They come to work every day. There's no sick days. There's no I'm hurting or anything like that. Those guys come, you know, 
come to work every day. And credit to Coach Shoemaker, does an unbelievable job with those guys. Well, hopefully not the last game here at Benson Stadium, but what a home field advantage you've enjoyed here uh, on the campus of UIW. It maybe has a little something to do with the field going east to west, and you get to practice with that every day, but the longest active home streak in college football in the state of Texas is right here in San Antonio at Benson Stadium, and uh, you got the Paladins from Furman coming in this weekend. Uh, just w what are your keys to the game, and uh, how do you think it's going to go against uh, the Paladins who are coming off of that win against Elon? Yeah, I think our discipline is going to be huge. That's what I preached all week to these guys. Um, they're a good team. Um, you know, they, 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 they're they very similar, and the mindset is they want to get good at something. They're not going to give you a ton of different looks, but they, they, they're able to execute at a high level, and, and uh, they got really good players, really good coaches um, coming off a huge win, playoff win. They're, those guys are going to be juiced up, ready to go, and and uh, I think it, it comes down to, to us, though, I think how we execute on offense, uh, getting our tempo established, um, you know, stopping the run on defense is going to be the key there. Um they, they they do a really good job there, and and uh, getting some turnovers. I think in games like this, um, you got to get turnovers. Um, who can who can protect the ball, the ball security on offense and, and defense, and getting the getting that ball out. So um, it should be a great game. I know that. Um, I'm just really excited for the the city of San Antonio, our players. Um, you know this university. Um, it's it's a it's not ever ever you know you don't get this opportunity very often to get a home playoff game. So I got to take advantage of it. Well, Coach, thank you for your time. Good luck, and uh, hopefully we do a lot more of these uh, for game day of every FCS playoff match. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, this isn't the last time we see you at Benson Stadium, but the standings, the rest of the bracket will kind of determine that. But, you know, uh, it is awesome to see you guys, and good luck the rest of the way. All right, appreciate it, Carl.